In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 5. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 3. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law a Pharisee, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss, because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection 
and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it out to servants and went into another country. When the season for the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When, therefore, the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their season. Jesus said to them, Have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they perceived that he was speaking against them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowd because they held him as a prophet. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Psalm 80, verse 7. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts, Let your face shine that we may be saved. This is the text. The three R's from of old, reading, writing, and arithmetic. The three R's from holy writ today, resignation, restoration, reformation. Resignation. The good that I would do, I do not, and that which I would not do, that I do. Oh, who will deliver me from this body of death? So questioned St. Paul in Romans 7, 19. Dogs bark, cats meow, sin or sin. There is a sense of resignation to the sinful and fallen order in our lives, in our country, in our state, in the world. But against the resignation, the psalmic word of restoration comes forth to challenge and to change. Three times in Psalm 80, in verses 1, 7, and 19, we read, Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Restoration? Tis the business of God. Any restoration needed in your life, in mine, in our strained or broken relationships, especially in these pandemic days, in our judgmental and critical attitudes, in our quick angry feelings toward those near and dear or toward enemies near or far. I can quickly think of at least three things I said or did that I wish I hadn't in the past week. 
Oh, the good that I would do, I do not do, and that which I would not do, that I do. Who will deliver me? Thanks be to God. Our deliverance comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Resignation lifted. Restoration accomplished. There is forgiveness. There is hope. And there is reformation. For resignation leads to restoration. Restoration leads to reformation. That's the process of scriptural 3 Ring. Tis a manner of life for living. Yes, resigned are we, but yes, restored are we, and yes, reforming ought we be. To form and reform, your parish confirmands are instructed to memorize 16 questions and answers. The three R's of resignation, restoration, and reformation are placed before them, and we pray within them. The first seven Q&As are these. What are the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments are the law of God. What is a summary of the first three? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. What is a summary of the last seven? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Can anyone keep God's commandments as he wants us to keep them? No, since the fall into sin, no one can keep the law perfectly. Even Christians can keep it only imperfectly. Oh, resignation. Is anyone justified by the keeping of the law? No one is justified by the law in the sight of God. More resignation. How then are we saved? We are saved by God's grace through faith for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Restoration. What then is the purpose of the law? The law has a threefold purpose. It helps to keep order in the world. It shows our sin. It teaches us Christians which works we must do to lead a God-pleasing life. Reformation. The confirmands learn those three R's week by week, Sunday by Sunday, and we would do well to review and follow in their train. Our Lord was resigned to bear the cross, a noble resignation, by which he restored us and wrought our restoration and our salvation, salvation. And by word and sacrament, he reforms us for the good of others and for ourselves. Let the Reformation re-begin. Paul Speratus, perhaps Speratus, perhaps Speratus. We couldn't quite figure out the exact pronunciation. He was a contemporary of Luther. He had Swabian and Polish roots, and he wrote a hymn that has captivated the Christian world, certainly of Lutheran, Reformation, Protestant order. The hymn, Es ist das Heil, is the most famous hymn that he wrote and one of the oldest and best-known Lutheran hymns. It was probably written in the fall of 1523. That's pre-Augsburg, confession time. And then included in the first Lutheran hymnal, the so-called Acht Liederbuch, 1524. It was headed a hymn of law and faith, powerfully furnished with God's word, and was in 14 stanzas. It has been called, quote, the true confessional hymn of the Reformation, close quotes, and the, open quotes, poetical counterpart of Luther's preface to the epistle to the Romans, close quotes. Miles Coverdale, across the English Channel, translated it for his goosely psalms and spiritual songs. The hymn, in two stanzas, touches upon the theme today of Resignation, restoration, reformation. The law reveals the guilt of sin and makes us conscience-stricken resignation. But then the gospel enters in, the sinful soul to quicken restoration. 
Come to the cross, trust Christ and live. The law no peace can ever give, no comfort and no blessing. Faith clings to Jesus' cross alone and rests in Him unceasing. And by its fruits true faith is known with love and hope increasing reformation. For faith alone can justify. Works serve our neighbor and supply the proof that faith is living. Resignation, restoration, reformation. So let it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In el nombre del Padre y del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common prayers for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit, that all who call Jesus Lord may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Send down upon all ministers of the gospel and upon the congregations committed to their care the healthful spirit of your grace, that they may please you in all things. To this end, bless the ministry of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League that their efforts may bring forth abundant fruit for your glory. Behold in mercy all who are in authority over us, those in the church, and the government, and those who protect us from selfish evil around us. Guide the electorate of our nation to support those who humbly call on your name and seek your face. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, and help those who call upon you in any need especially of ill health, 
and those facing the end of their life, that they may have patience in the midst of suffering, and according to your will, be released from their affliction through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Lord has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.